Pasquale. I I live in uh, Spain and I work at the Pius Hospital Bar Valch in Tarragona. I'm very happy to be here with you. I'll be speaking about digital photography for teledermatology and I'm gonna speak a little bit about you know not only about the photograph itself but the system and devices we have available right now. I do have a conflict of interest. I am a consultant for Dermosite. And what's new in, in medical photography? What's new in teledermatology in regards to photography? Well, I think this guy is the guy that is new, that it has changed. It was like an explosion and it has changed our way of doing medicine, our way of doing dermatology. And of course, it has had an impact on teledermatology. And basically what happened is that before COVID, we, all of us did uh, a store and forward telederm. Uh, this it was like a, a, the way we ended up doing all telederm because it was the most practical uh, way of doing it because we got the images both clinical and dermoscopically. And then our, uh, after we got them a second time, we would, would sit down and see these images on a monitor and analyze them and make a diagnosis. And we focused all our attention on our, the main actor for this, which was the family physician. We needed the, the, our family physicians to send good images. Otherwise, we cannot make a diagnosis. And as they were the main actors, we concentrated our attention on teaching them how to take the, the, the photographs. And in, in teaching medical photography, it's teaching photography uh, with certain aspects that concern uh, the, the standardization that is required for a good uh, quality image that is standardized. Uh, the first one seems an obvious one is focusing. And, and before, um, you know, mobile phones, when we had to use SLR cameras, maybe this was an important issue because it's not so obvious uh, using a manual focus to, to get the right focus on an image. Nowadays, fortunately, with mobiles, we just have to touch the screen and, and, and you focus an image. The depth of field is that one that will, uh, by using a, a deep depth of field, you will have focus all planes on the image. So you will have the ear lobes as focused as the tip of your nose. A shallow depth of field will only focus one part of the body. Color calibration, or also called the white balance, is that what makes that in an image what is white looks white. And you say, well, of course, how else can it look? Well, you know, just take a picture of a table uh, in the evening, and you have your the bulb in your living room on, and you'll see that what is white looks yellow, because different bulbs change colors. And it happens the same when you take your pictures of your patients. If you're using natural light, uh, but it's a cloudy day, you will get bluish tones. And if you have a very sunny days, you will get a lot of shadows. So getting the right color is extremely important because we make diagnosis based on color. So be careful about the lights that you use and how you illuminate the subject. Uh, always images need to be taken with the highest resolution because we need those images to be good because we want to use them eventually for a publication so we want them to be of high quality. Uh, using a backdrop is essential because it removes distractions. All the distractions that I have back there that you're trying to see, you know what I have back there, well those distractions need to be removed when you want to have a good uh, clinical image. But not only the distractions that are over there, but the distractions on the patient, earrings, colors, makeup, glasses, etc. The field of view uh, means that you need to take different uh, distances uh, of the lesion. For instance, if you have a tumor and you take a close-up, which is a very important image, you also need to take a picture farther away because you want to see that tumor in relation to the anatomical area. So that you're capable of uh, understanding uh, if that tumor is amenable to be treated in one way or another because it's you know it's a three millimeter tumor or it's a you know a one centimeter tumor. Uh, positions need to be always the same so that you can monitor and compare. 
and it's important to use a scale when you especially when you're using and treating tumors but uh, you can have distortions added uh, to the images and these distortions can be optical or can be perspective distortions and basically the classical optical distortion is the also called the lens distortion and this lady has been taken in the same position exact same position but with different lenses and as you can see on the bottom right she looks totally distorted with a 50 millimeter lens and, uh, and and that distraction really bothers you when you see it instead with a 350 millimeter lens she's still distorted but it's it's an, a distortion that you accept your mind accepts the most but actually the way she really looks is more like here on the bottom left with a 70 millimeter between 50 and 70 millimeter uh, lens uh, you can get of course optical distortions also with mobile phones and you usually get them when you get very close to the subject that's why you always need to get away from the subject at least two meters to get the proportions the correct proportions otherwise the same fellow looks you know with a huge nose in comparison to the way he really looks Perspective distortion has to do with the position of the camera in relation to the subject and you can see how per and, and, and perspective distortion is probably a little bit easy to correct with softwares afterwards. The best photo is the one that is good from the beginning that you don't need to go in post processing. But still, there, is, there are ways nowadays to correct uh, the perspective distortion. And this is, you know, just one of those funny, uh, very distorted images where the hand is smaller than the eye. With dermoscopy, things get simpler, fortunately. And uh, dermoscopy is so important for us to make diagnosis, especially for those of us that work in oncology. And sometimes, even when the clinical image is bad, we can make a diagnosis because we do get a good dermoscopic images. You, like, um, you know, I, I always tell, you know, as a joke that you, you need to take a course to take a good clinical picture, but you need to take a course to take a bad dermoscopic image. Because distance is the same, light is the same, colors are preserved, so you, maybe the most common mistake with dermoscopy is to take pictures with the crust. You have need to remove crust so that you can see what's below the crust. And it's important to have a close-up uh, image and then one farther away. Nowadays, basically all dermoscopes include a scale, which is very important when you take that image far away because you, you, you understand how many millimeters the lesion is. But now came COVID, and now everybody's sending images. I mean, we get images through WhatsApp. I mean, I, during the, the confinement, I mean, we got images from everywhere. I mean, from, from WhatsApp, from Gmail, from whatever, Yahoo. And, and this direct to cons this changed our way of doing Teladerm because suddenly we were bombarded by photos sent directly by consumers. And of course, the quality is what it is. I mean, if we were complaining about the quality from family physicians, well, welcome to the new world. Now we're getting, you know, bye-bye standardization. And so this is how I feel right now about medical images because pre-COVID I had to teach my family physicians and I only had to concentrate on them. Well, maybe family physicians and nurses and some medical students. But this is the way, you know, life is. I mean, I have everybody sending images. And, and maybe in a very naive way, I have made a video hoping that people can learn how to take images You know, just giving some few tips on, on on the subject and, you know, get somebody else to take the picture, use the back camera and on the front camera, etc. Because this new modality of doing Teladerm, which includes phone call or video call and photograph, is not bad. I mean, I, 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 I somehow find it interesting to, to talk to the, be able to talk to the patient, to talk and see the patient as in video calls. And definitely the image needs to be sent up in, on the side. 
uh, because it needs to be a photograph. I mean, videos are still too bad uh, quality images to allow us to make a diagnosis from videos. So what's the future? Well, the future is that uh, we won't be able to teach people to take good photographs because that will be impossible. And so we need uh, devices that make automatic adjustments. Probably not for all of this, because I mean, uh, distractions from the patients need to be taken away any, anyhow, anyway. Uh, but but. Yes, with illumination, color calibration, focus, and, and, and we, we will need to have cameras that take good clinical images and, and adjust and make all the adjustments that, that are necessary for us to get a good quality image. It's certainly not going to be through teaching patients to take them uh, correctly. And there are gadgets that are already out in the market that are helping us take images for ourselves from the patients uh, for our the record to keep record of, of the condition but also to have a second opinion from other colleagues images that are taken from family physicians and sent to us and most of and most importantly now many companies are coming out with gadgets that are uh, meant to be used by consumers directly uh, Meta Optima is one of those companies that has its own system that is adaptable to uh, to mobiles, and then the, you can download this Im these images get into their own software where you locate the image and get analyzed. But also, they have come out with a <coughs> dermoscope for for patients that are high risk patients. Uh, Canfield, probably the largest uh, photography company. Uh, has a system that again is a it's a dermoscope that can be adapted to both tablets or mobiles, and, and they have their own application so that you can uh, not only capture the image but manage it, communicate, save it, and compare. And you can also uh, download and, and integrate this to your office system. For instance, if you work with their uh, mirror system. Uh, Dermoside has a, a unit that they, from which they have a huge experience in pharmacy teledermatology, and what they do is uh, they take with the same unit three, uh, they take three images. They take without the nose, they take the clinical image, but they also take once you put the nose a dermoscopic image, and then. The, this is a third image that is processed so that you can have a processed a dermoscopic image through artificial, artificial intelligence uh, to, to get more information and more accurate diagnosis. 3G Dermlight has come out uh, with this tiny accessory for, for mobile phones and it's pretend to be used by directly by consumers, high-risk uh, patients for melanoma. Of course, they have, you know, they have adjusted prices so that th these are not uh, uh, dermo dermoscopes as, as expensive as the ones that are used by professionals. Photo Finder has come out with a, also with a, in a, with a system that is adaptable to a mobile, and in this case, they have this scope is a joint venture between Dermlight and PhotoFinder. And what, again, they, they similar to Camfield, they also have their app uh, where they, they, an app that of course also works with artificial intelligence, management of the lesion location on, on, on the body. Marco Demetra finally has this stylish unit that has two integrated cameras. One is for clinical photograph and one is for the dermoscopic photograph. Uh, different to the other ones is that you don't buy this uh, this uh, this uh, unit, but you rent it. Basically, you get it once you rent one of the systems. That um, it's a, it's a it's a license where you can send you can save up to in, in, with the essential one up to two thousand dermoscopic images, 
and you can have image location, diagnosis, management strategy, etc. And with different uh, types of licenses, you get more uh, uh, more licenses to use if you have a, a, a clinic uh, the way you have other physicians. So basically, these are the companies that I have found that are doing uh, gadgets and working with us to help us get better images. I think the future is needs to be focused on the clinical photography. Dermoscopy, the dermoscopic images are just fine. We get great dermoscopic images, but we need to concentrate on getting these good clinical images that will allow us to make diagnosis. Thank you very much.